How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. You'll uh, probably recognise this spot from where I camped with Simon, where I put up kind of this kind of wall, reflector, if you want to call it. Come here because it's nice and flat and um, there's quite a lot of space and I've got a new tent to try out. Doing a spot of hot tent in tonight. The temperature's finally starting to drop a bit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've got plenty of room here to set that up and uh, have a play around. This is my first time setting it up, first time bringing it out. Um, I'm quite looking forward to using it. It looks like quite a roomy tent. So I better get on with it. As you can see, it's quite a large tent, um, even when packed, and you've got the pole separate here. Uh, yeah, I did manage to get it in the 66 litre pack though with everything else, so pretty happy about that. Um, I'm going to move this log that I've put here for the chopping on and working on and put it right in the middle of this area. I saw a video on this a little while ago, but uh, I've not actually looked inside here. Very trusting here. So we're going to have to make this up as we go along. Some pretty hefty pegs. Got a big ground sheet here so I can see exactly where the tent's going to sit, which is quite handy because we've got quite a lot of lowish branches here. Got a TP style ventilation at the top here and there's bug net as well you can have open or not and uh, got a hood for it. Stove jacks just here. So it's going to roll up. Ready to roll as it is. Got the inner here. Trying to figure out how this goes. It's obviously going to go the opposite side to the stove jack up here. Probably going to be our top. I'm just going to hook it on the pegs for the ground sheet, I think.
I'm trying everything out here. Um, I've got the inner in, the uh, ground sheet, and the outer, and the hood. Um, the hood's going to stay on for sure because, you know, we're in Britain. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be putting in this tent stove over here, which is also from Pomoli, the same company. So what I'm probably going to do is roll this back, this ground sheet, as it's pegged in separate anyway. Um, so I'm just playing around, I'm seeing how things work. So it's nice to have the ground sheet under the inner there, keeps that clean. But yeah, I'm just going to roll it back out of the way so there's no kind of fire hazards or melting hazards. Now this is their lightweight titanium T1 stove. Uh, I have had it out and done a test burn at home because you do have to burn in these titanium uh, chimney flues. This is just to stop it jingling about so much. And you've got a grill there as well so you can use it like a campfire. Now I actually have three titanium tent stoves at this point. Uh, one I bought and two sent to me by different companies. Um, this one did quite impress me. Now it's not the lightest, I think they do do lighter themselves actually. But um, the simplicity of it, rigidity of it, and the fact that it's titanium and it's still got these glass windows on the side and the front. You can have both sides, they've got various ways of kind of specking it, I believe. But um, yeah, it's very impressive. So this is the first time I've used it in anger, as they say. And you've also got kind of proper legs on it as well. Often you just have like the um, threaded bolts on these things. And you've got your, your lid. Gloves are usually best for this bit. I wasn't very easily able to get that on film. Um, what you do is, because they're rolled the short way, you have to um, kind of get a form and roll them around that form the first time you burn it in. And that kind of sets the shape. Well, I don't think the burn I did was really long enough to set it properly. So, had a little bit of resistance still. Got a little bit of a kink in it. Hopefully I can get out at some point. But yeah, that's just kind of what these titanium ones are like. A little bit fiddly, but uh, worth it if you're walking a long way. Just to show you, I've got the other door on the other side open here, which um, you'd probably do really if you didn't have the inner in there, um, just to let that air through, but uh, where the inner is, obviously that's blocking that off. But yeah, it's just getting to know it really. And that's good for light for filming. <laughs> You can probably see here, this is some thick material, this is like 300D Oxford material and on the inside it's like silver lined for reflecting heat. And you've got that snow skirt out there as well, so this is, you know, you can put snow on that if it is snow and you can put leaves on it, logs on it, be good in the wind too. Um, on the pole you've got a hanger, I've got this Olight O-Lantern with me which was quite a success last time, so that's silver lining, it's probably going to help kind of light up in here as well.
Well, next job is to go look for a bit of firewood. We'll be taking the buck saw, Simon, bloke in the woods, buck saw, um, and I'm going to be looking out for some oak, hopefully. Well, this is definitely a piece of oak here. It's very mossy and wet, but on the inside being a hardwood, it's probably going to be just fine. So that's the inside of that bit of oak, bone dry, lovely. We've got a selection here of the oak and the hornbeam, which is pretty plentiful here, and some leftover chestnut as well from the shelter build, which I've brought over. So the chestnut's bigger, so it's going to definitely need breaking down. Here in the inner, with a little lighting from the Olight lantern, um, I've got my Trekology pad, which is uh, what I seem to be gravitating towards lately. Um, my winter bag, well, my free season bag, and um, my stuff sack pillow, and the little dog bowl that I put my keys and wallet and stuff in. So, pretty simple setup. And you can see the vent at the back there, which has the vent of the external one behind it as well which I might as well show you, I guess. There's that external vent, covered vent, which is on the opposite side to the stove jack for that kind of air circulation. There's mesh underneath, of course. It's been pretty wet weather over the last couple of days, so uh, I'm just gonna batten down a few bits rather than collect twigs to get this going.
I have some birch bark. It's quite damp, so I'm going to use some of this fat wood that I keep in the pack. Just get some shavings just to get it started. Still need to sharpen the spine of this knife a little bit to be honest, but... There we go. Get that fat wood going. Also get on some of this birch bark. Well, I've got a very nice piece of beef here. If we get silver side, I'm just going to season it up. Salt and pepper. And I'm trying something different today. I've got this, which is a spit and some of you are going to have seen it on other channels and stuff. It's called the coffee spit. And you've got uh, your two legs. And you've got... It's very similar to the spit method I do with natural materials where you've got the square peg fits in there so it stops it rotating. It's got two pieces on it to stop the meat from spinning. Very simple design. Now you can't do massive pieces of meat but uh, something like this, like a piece for one or two people next to the fire. Perfect. So I'm just going to skewer this through. Like so. That should rotate nicely. So your pointed end in, end in there and your square end there. You've got about sort of 10 seconds to comfort there, so that should slow roast. You can get catch the drippings, I'm not too fussed today, it's only a small piece. And I do have the thermometer probe with me, I'll put that in a bit later though. The beef's underway and the uh, fire's keeping me warm. So I think it's time for a beer. Oh, I can relax a little bit now, waiting for this beef to do. Plan is to do some potatoes with it as well in the frying pan. I don't have a grill other than the one that come with the thing actually. Yeah, I could probably put that grill on there. Yes, I've got a plan. The beef's on its way now, so I'm just going to prep. Ooh, my open has got quite stiff. There we go. So I'm just going to prep these. I'm just going to cube them up and do my Kent 
potatoes, as everyone seems to call them. Getting a bit fatter than usual. Oh, lost one. Man overboard. Yeah, I think I'll do both, why not? Just heard the uh, owl going off. You may hear it. I've just got the potatoes on, I'm using a makeshift grill, using the grill from the stove and a couple of logs over the fire here. So I'm just frying up some potatoes so they'll be ready by the time the beef is done and I had a little rest. And here's the potatoes. Good. I've not given it much resting time, but uh, it should be at the medium level, which is about perfect, just slightly bloody in the middle. Maybe medium rare, but uh. Forward to it. Oh, that's good. Get some of them Kent fried potatoes. Oh, I've been waiting two hours for this. <laughs> have to get some salt on these. I genuinely ate every last bit of that. <laughs> I really needed it. Beautiful. And I've cut some kindling. Just to get it going.
Good morning. Had quite a good night to be honest. It's nice and cosy. That tent really retains the heat after the stove stopped. It's nice thick material, reflective, lovely in there. A little bit of condensation but then the ground's soaking wet and I heated it up in there so what do I expect? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to cook some breakfast and I've got to decide whether I just do it on the stove in the tent because it's spitting or if I just drag it out and use it as a fire pit. I'm thinking fire pit because it's not too bad. I was burning some silver birch last night and you can see from the resinous materials that it did some dripping. There's a couple of drips down the chimney flue as well. Just going to open up this side as well to let some air go through. One sausage, one bacon, and one egg. Little breakfast today.
that Pomoli tent is bomb proof. <laughs> I think that's going to be a good winter tent with the skirt, the um, reinforced kind of zip covers with the velcro on, even the pegs are amazing. I'm pretty happy with this tent. This is going to get us through winter with some nice hot tent camping. <laughs> um, I'll put any links below for things used in this video and uh, I'm going to carry on getting packed up. This is what that horrible birch has done to the inside of the flue. Just like creosote. It's gonna need a good old clean. Well, that's it for this trip. Thank you very much for watching. Join me next week and we'll do some campfire cooking. See you soon.